Hey guys, today I have something slightly crazy in mind. Not real crazy, but just a tiny bit crazy. Today I'm going to overclock the AMD Ryzen 3 3100 to 4.3 GHz with a stock cooler Wraith Stealth. As you may know and see, this thing sure is a pretty small cooler. But as my test results at stock clearly have shown, the Wraith Stealth handles the Ryzen 3 3100 very well in terms of temperatures. Things will look different with today's overclock though. And to be fair, it's not even a small bump in frequency. But this is in fact achievable as you'll soon see for yourselves. Now what do I want to achieve with the overclock? Well, obviously more performance, but mainly I want to determine whether or not by overclocking the 3100 you could match the performance level of the superior 3300X. Of course we should keep in mind that other than the 3300X, the 3100 comes with a huge handicap, that being the unfavorable 2 plus 2 CCX layout. So how much more performance can we actually squeeze out here for gaming and could the Ryzen 3 3100 turn out to be the better bang for the buck for about 99 US dollars right now as opposed to the 3300X? That is of course if you're willing to do some tweaking on your own. Those that know me well know for a fact that with certain things I'm very precise. Not all, but certain things. So today for the sake of completeness I will not just be overclocking with the stock cooler, but in order to gather some comparable results I'll also be using the Deepcool Castle 240EX AIO liquid cooler. Primarily though it's all about the results with AMD's Wraith Stealth. Now just so you all know right away what I'll be using for testing, the usual ASRock X570 Tai Chi motherboard, since I don't happen to have a cheaper more realistic one at hand, and of course the Nvidia RTX 2080 Ti cannot be missing, basically to avoid any GPU bottlenecks more or less. Alright, then let's get started. Before pulling off any overclock, as always I would advise you to first check how your current stock clock speeds behave and what CPU voltage is being used at stock settings. With all four cores at 100% full load, with the 3100 I achieve exactly 3.9 GHz. The voltage is at about 1.16 volts. If you don't consider that super tempting, I don't know, then I'm confused. The Ryzen 3 3300X clocks up to 4.3 GHz across all four cores, does however However, sport a higher boost clock of 4.35 GHz when in-game, where often not all four cores are stressed fully. The goal today are at least 4.3 GHz for the 3100. But right off the bat let me clarify, so you're not disappointed afterwards, I did not overclock to 4.35 GHz, since for that very last step the CPU required slightly more voltage than I had in mind, and to put it mildly the stock cooler was already struggling keeping those temperatures in check at 4.3 GHz. You'll soon see what I mean. As always you could get the overclocking job done by using the AMD Ryzen master tool or by going for the old fashioned way, that being the BIOS. Since I dislike overclocking within the operating system, although I do not condemn people that prefer doing it this way, I'll enter the BIOS and will adjust two simple settings. I dial in the desired clock speed of 4300 MHz and roughly the voltage I want to use for that. That can differ from motherboard to motherboard, as well as from CPU to CPU. Some CPUs require less voltage to achieve the same stable overclock, others need more. So for me it's 1.3625 volts. If necessary you could go for some LLC, load line calibration settings, but these automatic settings in my case work just fine. Now when reading out the clock speeds along with the CPU voltage within Windows, there might be some deviations from what you've entered in the BIOS, which is why we often should slowly increase the voltage in small increments. On average my 3100 is now running at 1.337 volts at full load. The 4.3 GHz overclock after hours of stress testing at first glance seems to be stable for now. Of course before I went for the voltage I went for, I did some experimenting with lower and higher voltages. 1.337 volts seem to work perfectly in my case. Well, great, that's all good, but how does the 4.3 GHz overclock affect performance?
as I've somewhat expected, those 4.3 GHz really help the Ryzen 3 3100 gain some land, so to speak, especially when it comes to applications that heavily rely on multi-threading. That's usually video editing, rendering and the likes. The 3300X does get some serious competition there, although to be fair, you surely could overclock that chip slightly too. But anyway, the 3100 overclocked to 4.3 GHz nicely manages to keep up with the 3300X in productivity aspects. It's just that people that seriously plan to get some work done most likely will not settle for a $99 CPU to do the job. Therefore, gaming is the next big thing that comes to mind. At least we wish for a processor to be good at gaming in this lower price range. And while the 3100 even at stock without any overclocking does already somewhat impress, overclocking does certainly help bring a couple more FPS to the table. Unfortunately, we don't see such a positive performance gain in games as we've seen with rendering etc. Nonetheless, any performance gain is a gain. Sometimes you notice more, sometimes less. Still, in my opinion, overclocking is very much worth it here. And the effort required here is hardly worth mentioning. However, there's one thing I still want to let you know about, even though many don't want to hear it. Quad cores like the 3100 and the 3300X are no longer a guarantee for success in terms of future proofness. Yeah, sure, it may be the case that right now the frame rate in games is still looking great, but be warned, there by now already are game titles out there that have some trouble dealing with four cores, even when coming with eight threads. So we do see some first signs of quad cores nearing their end. How and when it really is going to happen, no one can tell for sure. Due to the upcoming next-gen consoles, it is speculated that 8 cores could become the new standard in the future, though. And no matter how much I love and hype the amount of performance these affordable quad-core CPUs by AMD deliver, I don't want you to suddenly be disappointed after a year or two because of my big recommendations should quad-cores suddenly not be up to their task anymore. The PC market is evolving fast. Nevertheless, those that are aware of the risks involved and, I don't know, want to go and get such a budget gaming CPU for a transitional phase, no worries, of course the majority of game titles will still run very well with it. Even the 3100, despite its unfavorable CCX configuration, does manage to score, especially when overclocked as seen today. The power consumption is also looking great. It's just the temperatures that surely will shock some of you watching. With a proper CPU cooler, it's not a big deal at all, but if you let the included AMD Wraith Stealth do the job with the overclock, you're quickly moving towards the 90 degrees Celsius mark. That's not necessarily good if you ask me. But then again, I can give you some relief, those results are mainly only achieved with hardcore rendering tests running. While gaming, the temperature is lower, of course, in the range of 70 to 80 degrees Celsius. But then again, that's depending on the game you fire up. But overall, the Tiny Wraith Stealth Stock Cooler does a pretty good job, all things considered. Should you require more voltage for that kind of overclock, however, things would start looking bad. If that's the case, you might have to settle for 4.2 GHz instead of the 4.3. Well, the video has gotten quite long by now. I hope you've enjoyed this somewhat small adventure. If not, no worries. With that said, as always, thanks a lot for watching.